For the first time in 12 years since F1 2011, I'm driving properly with the pad in an F1 game. Today, we're gonna test out the brand new precision drive technology. So guys, leave a like on the video, subscribe for more, and let's get into it. Introducing precision drive controller technology in F1 23, a transformative controller input tech to enable a more precise and rewarding driver experience on standard controllers. First time in a while I get to actually look around the garage like this with a controller in hand. But yeah, we're gonna jump into this time trial session here at Canada with the Aston Martin showing off the new circuit and also we're gonna see what it's like driving this thing. So if we pause real quick and go to assists, you'll see to start off, I'm going with anti-lock brakes on and traction control on medium. I have not properly played the F1 game in a long time with a pad. And the last time I played it full time was 12 years ago now, so that's pretty insane. So um, yeah, my objective in this one is to try and get all the assists off. And I just wanted to quickly showcase this before we jump into it. As you can see in the controls tab, if we scroll over to the preset that has been selected for us, if we jump into it, precision drive technology has already been enabled by default in the game. So yeah, you're gonna jump into vibration and force feedback and you can basically customize everything here. So yeah, we'll see how that all works. I'm gonna leave everything on default for now. And we'll see how it feels. Straight away, my very first lap on a controller, and we're gonna do it in full, and then I'll go away do some practice for a bit. But we're gonna see how it feels. Okay, that feels actually surprisingly smooth. It doesn't feel super sharp and reactive on the joystick. Gonna have to get used to the braking, that's gonna be a bit of a learning experience. Ooh, the traction control there, gotta be careful. Okay, that's not too bad so far. I'm quite happy with this. Into these new chicanes. The objective here would be to not invalidate on this lap. That would be pretty sweet. Oh, well, I should not be too bad at this. I am on medium traction, of course, but hey ho. Let's adjust the brake bars. Oh, I've messed that up. There we go. On the brakes. Okay, let's go. We're cooking. This is my genuine very, very first lap in this game on a controller. I don't even know if I've actually done a lap on F122 with a pad. I know I did in F1 2021 a few laps, but definitely didn't do it in 22. And like I said, I haven't played with a pad regularly since F1 2011. But I'll tell you what, this has been a good first lap. A bit out of shape through there, but that's okay. Trying to see if I can be a bit smooth with the joystick and also the triggers. But I'll take that. That's a good first lap. I can't explain it. It feels heavy, but in a nice way. It feels like I have a bit of force feedback and a bit of control underneath me. And I can kind of decide where the car's going to go. I like it. It's almost a little bit understeery, but in a nice way. If that's even like possible, you basically get to really feel the car and know where to place it. I mean, I can correct a few errors here, albeit I am on medium traction, of course, and anti-lock brakes are on, but I'm looking forward to hopefully getting those off in a bit. Once I've done a few more laps, then I can get a bit more control on the trigger. Oh, look at that chicane. Okay. Lost a little bit on the exit, but we got the line beautifully through the first part there. Now then, I want to see if we can change a few things here and get some adjustments on the go. So the first, well, the two things I want to try and mess around with really is vibration and feedback strength. I would like to have a slightly heavier feeling if that's possible. So I'm going to increase the raw damper to 75 and see how that feels. Wasn't feeling that straight away, so I'm going to try 25 instead. I don't know what does what in which direction, whether it's heavier or lighter. So I'm just trying to find out which one is the better feeling. So we'll try 25. We'll go to 115 on vibration and feedback strength. See if I can get a bit more feeling. Yeah, I'll take that. That was nice. Lost a bit on the exit, but that's fine. And there's going to be a 13-1. Okay. Let's try and do a lap without assists. We've done 10 laps of practice. Let's see if we can improve. So, ABS off, traction off. So, all we have on right now is pit release, which always seems to go on. Even if you turn it off, it's like a bug where it keeps turning itself on. My first lap on a pad without assists. This should be a lot of fun. Right, let's see. Can we stay competitive without spinning or having a huge lock up? 
have a lock up there into turn one. Bit of oversteer there out of turn two, that's okay. Oh, that was excellent. Absolutely brilliant through there. Wall tap, not ideal. Oh, that's a lock up. And that's the back end. Getting the brakes a bit too much there. Scruffy, but somehow I didn't lose a hell of a lot of time. Slight lock up again there on the way in, but we keep it under control on the way out, and we're still hanging in there to be fair. Easy, easy. Just nick the right front on the way in. You know what? That was pretty decent. I'm happy with that. No assists, only three tenths off. Let's see if we can try and claw back some of that time through the chicane. We'll take that. Bit of a wall ride, but that's okay. Right, we pretty much matched our previous personal best. You know what? I'm happy with that. Let's uh, let's come to a race and let's see what we can do versus some AI. Now for the race, we are going to go to Imola because I want to try a different circuit in this video. Also, I drove this with the wheel and the track is the same as every other game. However, the drivability and the way this game has changed in terms of the physics makes this track 10 times more fun to drive. I want to see if that's the case on a pad. We're also going to do it in cockpit view because that has changed this year. And for some reason, I don't know why, it feels surprisingly way more drivable and visibility is way better. Anyway, we're going to jump into it and we're going to select the Alfa Tauri for this one, a different car. And we're going to drive as Yuki Tsunoda. Just to confirm, we'll knock it on to Elite. All assists off. Now this is an interesting one. <laughs> what AI difficulty do we go for? I'm going to say... 80... I'm going to go 80. I think that's fair. I will put damage on standard just to kind of give myself half a chance. Otherwise, we might never make it through. Right then, here we are. One shot qualifying and we are in cockpit view. I've turned the halo column off, but be surprised. I find this game just has much better drivability in cockpit view. So, let's see. We'll go into turn one and we'll try to nail it on the brakes. Not bad. Not bad at all, actually. Although, I'm already noticing I might be a bit too high on the old AI difficulty. We're keeping it together, though. This is looking pretty decent so far. Oh, that was lovely through there. Absolutely perfect through Aqua Minerale into the chicane. This could be a tough one. Trying to lock up over the curbs. Bit of wall spin, but that's okay. Direction change. A little bit slow on the pad through there. So we're going to be last by a long shot, but we'll see what the official gap is. That wasn't actually as bad as I thought. We weren't a million miles away. I think... I could actually give this a go. I think I can keep up because that was just one lap, my first lap at Imola with the pad pretty much ever. So let's give it a shot. I mean, we was one second and one tenth away from Nick, but for the most part, we're not a, ma a million miles away. We're more or less in the same postcode. So let's give it a crack in the race and see if we can try and hold up. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Sainz, Perez, Russell, Norris, Hulkenberg, Ocon, Bottas, Gasly, Albon, De Vries, Magnussen, Oscar Piastri, Fernando Alonso, Stroll, Joe, Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. So for this one, we're doing a five lap race, partly because of course I've got to try and get the videos down in terms of time. But yeah, we're going to jump into it here. A quick note, the grid run down this year looks really, really awesome. I love how that looks. And yeah, we're going to Jump into the action here, starting from the very back of the grid, the only way is forward, and we'll see if we can try and hold up, hopefully, with the pad, and uh, no assists. Let's get into it. Right, hold X to engage the clutch, and get the revs sorted. Okay. Okay. What button is the uh, ERS? I don't know what button the ERS is, that's uh, a bit of an issue. 
Ah, okay, L1, right. L1 is the RS, now we know. Okay, let's try that again. Now we know what buttons we have to press. Lights are on. And they're out. Another cracking start. Away we go. I'm gonna get the jump on a few of these boys. Down to turn one. I'm gonna try my luck around the outside. There we go. Not a bad start for a pad. Who says a rule player can't run the pad, hey? Easy does it. Through the real no chicane. I might short shift a lot, I won't lie. That might be on the menu as we just lock a left front. Inviting pressure there from Stroll, but we'll keep him behind. But I don't know what it is with cockpit view. It feels surprisingly drivable. I feel like I've got a ton of visibility. To kind of put it into words, it feels like the, the actual seating position has been moved forward and like we're right on the wheel, how it, how it is in real life. But the field of view has been increased or expanded, so you actually see a lot more around you and you also get a much bigger feeling of speed, I would say. I think that's a fair way of explaining it. So, yeah. Happy days so far. Good start to this race. And we're holding in there, man. We're, we're doing our bit. I reckon we can do okay with this difficulty by the end of it. I'm struggling a little bit with the brakes, I will admit. The uh, ABS off is an issue. I don't have great left, you know, trigger control. I'm naturally right-handed, so I don't have that kind of precision. But the the throttle, the you know, getting the power down with traction off is uh, going pretty well. So I'm happy with that so far. Also, I feel like I'm pretty smooth on the joysticks. I'm not uh, very erratic. I've got a bit of smoothness about it. So I think we're doing okay here. Oh, I'll say that. That was a horrible corner cut. Luckily, I've got uh, track limits on regular. Otherwise, we'd be getting a penalty straight away. Okay, trying to push a little bit here. Going quiet. Okay, DRS is now available. Battery is already pretty low. We're on the last 20% or so. Got some two wide action up ahead. You can bounce over the curbs quite nicely, to be fair. That's quite nice. So you could definitely get aggressive. I want to see if I can close in on Piastri here. That would be nice. I'd love to get her moved on. I'm basically making up for my braking deficiency by basically just turning in and letting the engine brake do the job for me. The cars this year have that downforce, like I mentioned in my previous video, which I'll leave linked in the top right, where you can basically just turn in and the car's very sharp on initial turn in. Oh. Oh no, it's gone. Oh well, didn't do too bad to be fair. It took us three laps to go for a spin. I'm gonna spend a minute, but we're gonna meet Mr. Flashback, our good old mate. Good to see ya. Closing in on Piastri. Not a great final corner, but we're now in the DRS train, in the battle. Could be some action up ahead here with two laps to go. Let's see if things get a little bit spicy. Oh, yes, that was lovely. I feel like I'm, I'm growing in confidence here. I feel like I can put a move on someone. There we go. Could we get a little look into the chicane? Castro goes defensive. Gonna try and get the cut back. There we go. Side by side with Oscar. Down to Ravazza. Going to break early because I want the DRS. Oscar's still there. We'll let him go. Haven't got a lot of battery left, but we've got the DRS. Got it closed. I accidentally shut it down there when I opened it. Here we go. Closing in. DRS super powerful this year. Whoa, Oscar, mate. Oh, moving under braking. And we'll see that from T-Cam, just to kind of confirm. But I felt like he moved in the braking zone. Could be wrong. Uh, well, it's the 50-50, to be fair. It's the nature of the corner. It's a bit of like Bottas v. Russell. I'm kind of taking the wider line. Or not. To be fair, it does feel like he's, he's moving across. Oh, so that's a bit of a racing incident. A bit of 50-50, to be fair. Pushing the brakes as much as I can to try and give myself a chance. Oh dear. Never mind. Wow, that was a heck of an impact. Let me know you're okay. 
Well, there you go, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe for more daily F1 content. Also, exclusive F1 23 content arriving soon. And yeah, hopefully you found the video informative and you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one, which will be a 100% race at Silverstone. As always, a big shout out to the members of the channel for supporting. Check out the two videos on screen and I'll see all of you in the next one. Take care and it's goodbye from me.